What's up everybody? It's Lexi D here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you all 10 lessons that I have learned in my 20s. I am now officially 30 years old. I turned 30 on Sunday, December 15th, and I was in lovely Belize. If I don't already have a vlog posted when this goes up, I'm going to have a vlog posted. I had such an amazing time. And do you know having to come back to Southern California to rain? I'm still adjusting. <laughs> so anyways, let's get started with this video. Make sure to get yourself a cup of coffee, something that's going to be cozy, make you comfortable, a nice blanket, whatever, because it might be a long one. We'll see or whatever. And let's get started. Number one, having financial security does not equate to happiness. That is a huge lesson that I learned in my 20s. When I went off to college and I was 18 years old, in my mind, I was like, you know what? I'm going to major in something that's going to get me a job so that I can be financially secure and financially independent. Um, it had been hard. Um, it had been ingrained in me growing up the importance of being financially responsible and so that was a huge driver for me it wasn't that i was passionate about my major or anything like that it was just like uh this is something that i feel like is going to get me paid and so when i graduated college and i immediately started working and i was making good money and i was miserable i just i didn't know what was going on and i felt so frustrated and um maybe even depressed i definitely had some anxiety in regards to what was going on with my life here i was i did what i was supposed to do and i have the financial security but i'm not happy and i didn't have anybody at the time to talk to me and say hey like does this make sense for you why do you want to do this right no one's going to question you if you say like i'm doing this for the money right <laughs> no one's going to question you particularly parents are not going to question you it's like that's great it means you're not going to be asking me for money you know you do something and you get your own money that's your money you ain't going to ask me for money you know so i definitely learned that just because you're financially secure it does not mean that you're going to be happy now don't get it twisted uh being financially insecure i feel like would increase unhappiness it's just that i don't think that financial security is the sole indicator or the sole thing that can bring a person happiness number two your friendships will evolve and that's okay another one that i learned pretty early on in my 20s when i graduated high school i or when i graduated college and I didn't move too far away from college and I had quite a few friends who were in the LA area. I had expectations around us hanging out and I thought we were gonna hang out just like we did in college. <laughs> it's not realistic, right? And I went through a period of loneliness. I have videos on this that I'll have linked below and in the cards above. And that was a really, it was a rough time for me. And so I didn't, I didn't know how to really navigate my friendships and I had to quickly learn that friendships are relationships and they do require effort they do require you setting aside time which reminds me there's someone who I need to text her about us setting aside time to have a phone call and that was something that was so baffling to me initially like oh my gosh I need to actually set aside time to just call somebody but it's a real thing <laughs> and the sooner that you come to just accept that the sooner you can see your friendships grow and there will be some friendships that inevitably they end right they, they know they serve their purpose at the time that they needed to serve their purpose but it doesn't mean that that person is meant to go along with you in your next season of, of life so number two would definitely be that your friendships will evolve and that's okay number three is the aging process starts now i don't know who gave us this whole myth decided to tell us that you know in your 30s is when you start feeling achy nah i think for me it was about like 24 25 i started feeling my knees you know and my low back and just my bones in general <laughs> i felt them in ways that when i was 15 years old i i don't remember having low back pain i don't not i definitely didn't have knee pain 
you know, all the twerking and stuff we were doing, I definitely didn't have any knee pain, you know? So, um, the aging process, it starts now going, wanting to go to sleep earlier and all that kind of stuff and just getting tired. It starts now. <laughs> it starts in your 20s, uh, which may scare some people, but it also, I feel like in a way, is relieving because then the things that seem so scary about your 30s, if they happen sooner than that, it's like there's more time to adjust to. Being feminine in my romantic relationships is where my strength comes from. Now, I know this can be a controversial topic, so I'm not going to delve into these this whole thing in its entirety but my personal views on being feminine are allowing things to happen receiving being warm being receptive being intuitive and these are all things that when i initially thought of being feminine i i guess i attributed it to weakness and i now see femininity in such a different light and such an empowering light and you know you talk to the wrong person and their <laughs> femininity is going to be what it is right you talk to some people and they have their their views about it but for me personally what i've learned in my 20s is that when i do switch on the feminine side of myself in my romantic relationships i get the results that i want I get the men who are calling me more, texting me more, who are wanting to be in my life. And this is something that is a work in progress for me. My default is to be masculine in the sense of doing, planning, acting, you know, like all of that because that's what I do at my job. So leaving the office and switching that off, that can be a challenge. But the times that I have found I'm able to successfully do that wow the results are just mind-boggling how different a man is when he is dealing with a feminine woman and i just i feel strongly that being feminine in my romantic relationships that is truly where my strength comes from so this next one i'm going to read verbatim um i don't want to try to i don't want to butcher it so let me just read it verbatim from my notebook here until you heal yourself, you will continue to attract and be attracted to that which will push you to grow. <sighs> if you're damaged emotionally and you're out here dating or even just trying to make certain connections in your life, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be chaotic. And... I have learned the hard way that until I do the nitty gritty hard work of going to therapy, praying consistently, abstaining from things, I am going to continue to attract people who are broken like myself, right? And I don't necessarily think that it all goes away entirely or that there is this ultimate goal to reach of never being broken again i think realistically there's always things that everybody's going to struggle with but i do think that there are improvements that can be made and i feel like until i actually do the work to heal those parts of myself that are broken i'm going to attract broken people and i'm going to be attracted to broken people and it is something that is so subconscious that even on a conscious level i can know that for instance in a romantic relationship that someone is not good for me but because there's a subconscious need that is getting met there it can be so hard to walk away and so it's like until i go in and peel back those layers and dissect what is really going on there i'm probably gonna stay in that situation longer than i would uh consciously even want to number six is there's a time and a place for everything and this really comes up for me when I think about um, a couple of things in my life, but what immediately comes to mind is work. When I got to my current job, there was a lot of things that were just unstructured in my opinion. I was so used to having a certain way about work at my former job that was a lot more structured, a lot more process based that when I moved over to this much smaller private company, I was not prepared 
for a lot of the adjustments I was going to have to make and um, this is actually feeling like it's going into a different point entirely but let me just bring it down the funnel here and so one of the adjustments that I had to make was knowing when to hang back on certain things and when to say certain things and when not to say certain things things um, cater my reactions to things depending on the person I'm talking to and depending on the time right and there there's been times where I felt like oh gosh I'm not going to have a point in which I can say this thing and I've had to learn to just hang back there will be a time for it there will be a time to discuss this it's just not right now the point here is that there's a time and a place for everything number seven is perfectionism cannot protect you from making failures or mistakes I have a video that I recently did about how crippling perfectionism can be and it wasn't until I got to the job I'm in right now that I really saw the negative effects of being a perfectionist and for some reason, I thought, um, subconsciously thought, that by trying to be perfect at everything, that I could hide the insecurity that I felt, that I could hide the inadequacy that I felt. And what I found was that there's nothing that you can do to really hide that. There's nothing that you can do to really overcompensate for that. And if anything, you may look a little crazy trying to be perfect because perfectionists also tend to be control freaks, <laughs> right? And so understanding that I'm human and I will make mistakes and that is such a cliche thing to say, but but seeing that in personally in my life um, come to fruition and being okay with that is something I have definitely had to learn in my 20s. Number eight is to be really honest about what you want. If you're not getting it, reevaluate your desire. This has come up in my dating life more than anywhere else I can think about at this moment. My job, I got the dream job. I got, you know, I acquired my condo, acquired my condo. I bought my condo. I am making the dollar amount, the exact figure that I said I wanted to make in the time frame. So it's like all these other areas are set in my life. But when it comes to the dating aspect of things, that's where I have struggled the most. And I have recently learned that I need to have some honest conversations with myself about what it is that I want. I'm a strong believer that I can have anything I want in this life, particularly as a follower of Christ. So what do I really want? That That's the question I'm going to be asking myself in my 30s when it comes to my romantic relationships. Asking myself what it is I want, making the decision and moving towards that. Number nine is diets don't work long term. I'm reading this book by Dr. Sherry Martin. It's called Naturally Slim and it is all based on the premise that diets don't work long term, that they will not sustain you, right? That depriving yourself of something is not a healthy route, right? You, everything in moderation. And you know, when I say that, that's so cliche, right? And depending on who you're talking to, if you talk to somebody who is naturally slim, and I have friends who are naturally slim who don't diet, um, talking to them after reading this book has just opened my eyes to this whole world that I wished that I knew existed and, and knew how to become a part of. And the final lesson that I have to share with you all, number 10, is to accept people as they are. Stop placing so many expectations on people. It only causes disappointment. It does. This doesn't mean that I don't think expectations should exist necessarily I think standards should exist expectations I think we should lessen those as much as possible and keep our standards high but at the end of the day accepting people for who they are so if a man is a player he's a player <laughs> if he lies he lies accept it move on if somebody is terrible at texting back don't take it personal 
understand that that person's terrible at texting back and adjust your expectations <laughs> adjust your expectations accordingly of that person the reality of the situation is we're gonna get older <laughs> god willing god willing we're going to get older and i feel great i i can tell you truly i feel great i did so many things for myself in my 20s and set myself up and I'm so proud of the 20 something year old me. There's definitely things that I, I look back on and like I said, that's why I have the lessons that I've learned. Um, they're, they're, those things I wanna make you know, adjust, adjustments in my 30s, but I am ultimately so proud of myself and I'm so happy and I feel so blessed to be able to say that I'm 30 years old um, and I'm excited for what's to come for me because I feel like there's going to be a lot of work that I'm going to do this year. I have some goals and um, I will share those once I accomplish them, you know, real G's move in silence like lasagna. <laughs> So I want to thank y'all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe so you can be notified when I post new videos. If you haven't already, make sure to turn on the notification bell that is located below this video as well. And I'll catch y'all in my next video. Deuces.